Proving trigonometric identities is, um, is a common question that would show up in, at this level. So you are expected to use as much identities as you've learned, the main identities, to prove these further identities. Now, um, you can come up with as many identities as you want, but we use the main ones as our anchor ones. And the trick here is just to be um, really clever with the algebra. It's you need to practice as many questions as you can. It's trial and error. It's seeing different examples and then you'll get the hang of it. So it's not a um, in one day sort of um, achievement. So it takes a while. But I'm going to do two questions. This one's pretty easy to do. And then the second one I'm going to discuss. Um, so the way to prove identity is just pick one side where you think, okay, it's easy for me to move from here to here, or it's easy for me to move from here to here, doesn't matter. Point is, you pick one side, you manipulate it, you use different identities in order to get to the other side. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this side, and I want to show that it's equal to this. So I know that uh, secant A is equal to 1 over cos A, and I know that tan A is equal to sine A over cos A, I think you can see where this is going. They have the same denominator. And the numerator is going to be this. And that's it. We're done. Uh, quite nice and easy. Um, this one doesn't seem, it seems, maybe it seems quite straightforward. But I'll be very honest, I did struggle with it because it didn't seem very straightforward um, until uh, I found one trick. And then I discovered the other easier trick. So um, I've tried manipulating this from either side, and it just seemed like this 1 minus cos A seemed a bit difficult to get rid of or to find. So what I would recommend is you pause this video, try it out on your own so that you can see where I'm going and how I'm arriving at this place. So I highly recommend you stop the video and try it before continuing. And then maybe... Uh, resume the video in between just to see how far you could get to um, where I'm going. So um, the best way to prove this is to actually use uh, the first um, identity because getting from here to get to 1 minus cos A won't seem very direct, but to get to here to a simpler form uh, is possible because you can cancel things out. So what I'm going to do is rewrite uh, the numerator, but because I know the only thing I could change here, there are no squares, so I can't use by the Gordian identity, but I can change tan a from uh, as sine a over cos a. So I have sine a, and then this will be sine a over cos a. Just a warning, there will be a lot of fractions in here. So this whole thing over 1 minus cos a. I'll simplify this, and I'm going to get sine squared a over cos a over again 1 minus cos a. Okay, so from here, the way I initially did it was actually um, rewrite this as, um, I reciprocated this, I'm just going to show you quickly what my intuition told me to do, and then I said, oh, well, this is multiplied by 1 minus cos a. The way you do it is you say, okay, it's divided by divided by 1 minus cos a, but then you change the division to multiplication and you reciprocate whatever you get here. And then um, then I get this thing, cos a 1 minus cos a. Um, and then what I did was use uh, partial fractions. So what I tried to do is split this fraction up into two parts, and then things kind of flowed, and then I was able to cancel things out. But this is a really long uh, method, and it just it didn't seem right. So the other method I found um, was to actually take um, the identity. So now that I have sine squared a, I can use the Pythagorean identity. So ideally, in these questions, they would always want you to use identities and not use partial fractions, but to keep partial fractions in case you would need it one day. So this is cos a the whole thing over 1 minus cos a. Now, this is where you need to really dig into your algebra. 1 minus cos a is the difference of two squares. Uh, it doesn't seem like it, but when you have 1 minus 1 squared minus b squared, it's 1 minus b, it, sorry, 
a squared minus b squared is a minus b and a plus b. So um, this one is a square number and cos a is a square number and there's a minus between them. I always tell my students keep uh, difference of two squares as a trick you would use in, and it could pop up in anywhere and obviously I didn't take my own advice. So one minus cos squared a um, is one minus cos a and one uh, plus cos a. All of this divided by cos a and then I'm just going to do myself a favor and say well all of this is divided by y minus cos a. Okay and this is where I'll reciprocate this fraction and change the division to a multiplication and so I'm going to get 1 minus cos a1 plus cos a or the whole thing over cos a times 1 over 1 minus cos a and these two lovely things cancel out and all I'm left with is 1 plus cos a over cos a plus the fraction up I get 1 over cos a and then this fraction which simplifies to 1 over cos a is just secant a and this is 1 which is what we needed here. Um, again as I mentioned in the beginning it's a matter of practice, it's a matter of trial and error, it's a matter of really digging into these questions and using the identities the best way you can. I even tried the double angle identity, compound identity, um, just to see where it works. And it's only through these trial and errors that you're going to be able to uh, be better at this and be more fluent.